But before I start the uh, message, a uh, little background on myself. I uh, had an aviation career. I retired from Portland Public Schools in Portland, Oregon. I hope you can forgive that after reading the news. But uh, it's, uh, it's a big disappointment to me now, years later, to see what's happening up there. But uh, I did do my aviation career there as an educator. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to be here today to spread the worldwide gospel news throughout Arizona. And I thank you for that kind invitation. AWR's theme is no walls, no borders, no limits. And we hope that you realize that that is a, is a, uh, is a, achievable right here in our, in our city. But before I present the report and uh, the AWR report and my message, let me be emphatic that Jesus must be first in everything. He must receive all the praise, honor, and glory for anything that we say and do. And when we realize the, uh, what God has done, what he's given for us in his son, that we'll respond in loving gratitude and service for him. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you've been so wonderful in so many ways, and you've lead and, as you lead and direct and guide us, we welcome everyone into your family because we are family, a worldwide family, and we want to embrace each and every one is our prayer in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Today, today I'm going to tell you a few stories, and I bring greetings from Adventist Radio, of course. Some of these are incredible stories of God's grace and how people from all walks of life are being reached with the good news of salvation. And Jesus saves Maybe you were once a prodigal son. I uh, picked this out of Luke 15, verses 11, and, and, um, 11 to 16 and 22 and 20. Maybe you were, and I identify with that prodigal son. He was a wonderful person in some respects, but it took time, didn't it? Maybe you too left the security of your father. Maybe your son or your daughter or grandchild or as a friend is a prodigal. If so, this story is for you. In this story of the prodigal son, the father was old and he was worried about his boys. The youngest son was very disrespectful. That was when he was early on. He was very disrespectful, wishing that his father would hurry up and die so that he could get the inheritance. Since his father wasn't dying soon enough, he demanded his inheritance immediately. He was done with life on the farm. He wanted something new and exciting. Talk, taking his inheritance money, he rushed to the big city and there began a life of wild, drunken parties. He wasted the money that his father had worked so hard all his life to achieve. But one day, he hit rock bottom. If you have hit rock bottom or someone that you know has hit rock bottom, please know that Jesus isn't disgusted with you. Please know that rock bottom isn't hopeless. It's a necessity. Without hitting rock bottom, many would not be inspired to come home. The prodigal son realized in that moment how far he had fallen and how much he missed home. With much fear in his heart, he began the slow journey back home. What was the father's reaction? I believe that his reaction is much like your heavenly father's reaction would be. God respects a person's decision to run away. He won't force anyone 
to stay, but he won't, but he is waiting. He is waiting every day, hoping to see his child decide to take that first step toward home. The father didn't just welcome the son home. He reinstated him. He put the family robe on him and the family ring on his finger that signified being part of his family. He was able to transact business again. What does God say to such a son? Arise and go to your father. He will meet you a great way off, and if you take one step toward him in repentance, he will hasten to enfold you in his arms of infinite love. His ear is open to the cry of the contrite soul, the very first reaching out of the heart. After God is known to him, that first indication, never a prayer is offered, however faltering, never a tear is shed. However secret, never sincere desire after God is cherished, however feeble, but the Spirit of God goes out forth to meet it. And I added some emphasis to that. That's mine. But I felt that that was appropriate. Even before the prayer is uttered or the yearning of the heart is made known, Grace from Christ goes forth to meet the grace that is working upon the human heart. That's um, Christ's Object Lessons, page 206. It doesn't matter how the soul is lost, only that the soul is lost. God will stop at nothing to reach the lost soul for the kingdom of heaven. People's lives are much like a puzzle. And yet, they sense that one piece is missing. They have no idea what is missing in their lives or why. But they sense the emptiness inside. So they try to fill that empty hole with money, with relationships, with titles, with degrees. But it doesn't fill their hearts. Why? Why would that be? Because the puzzle piece that they are missing is only one shape. It only has one shape. And that shape that will fill it, and that is God. They are searching for something that will make their tomorrows worth facing. I would like to share my story, my testimony as a prodigal son. A prodigal? I wondered. Who? Me? Raised in a fundamental functioning nuclear Seventh-day Adventist family with both parents. How could that be, I asked myself. I asked that. Life began on a rural farm in western Oregon with loving, committed Christian parents and a loving grandmother. I was the last of three children, the baby of the family, so to speak. I was baptized at age 12, a pathfinder, Educated all 12 years in private Seventh-day Adventist schools. And I must add, happily so. I enjoyed it, loved it. I was an enthusiastic participant in an in-gathering, Vespers, and other church-sponsored activities. But toward the end of my academy years in Hawaii, I began to become affected by outside influences, big city issues, Vietnam War issues. Yet I registered with my draft board as 1AO, I was a conscientious objector, willing to be an army medic, but only if drafted. I went to college with a 2S deferment, married young at age 20, and took on family responsibilities. I was searching for that lost puzzle piece. Spiritual issues are being crowded out. I began slowly to drift Toward worldliness, worldliness. My professional aviation career development continued through the years in my, to my mid late twenties, and I reestablished regular church attendance with various church responsibilities, such as Sabbath school teacher, deacon, elder. I was what I realize now 
was a cultural Adventist. For about the next 35 years, I was a true Laodicean. Cold and hot. Lukewarm, which is nauseating to God. Was I just a passive prodigal? Let's read Revelation's description of Laodicea. It's not pretty. Revelation 3, 15 through 17. Jesus is speaking to John, the revelator. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art either, either cold or hot. Verse 16. So then, because thou art neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee or vomit thee out of my mouth. That's not a flattering statement. It's not a very good description in verse 17. Though blind, naked, miserable, there is hope. I want to add hope. Though I am sharing my testimony, it's not about me. It's about the leading of our loving Heavenly Father, guiding all of us in His plan for our lives as we cooperate with Him. Let's continue seeking Him by turning to some of the, our attention to some other parts of the world and look at some of the incredible manifestations of the Holy Spirit's influence and the guiding in several parts of the world. Let's change. I'll come back to my story. In a land far away, in Madagascar, there is a section of the red, called the Red Zone. That area is beyond dangerous, with crime occurring daily, every, virtually everywhere daily. Yet even in this place, 70 new churches have been established because of Adventist World Radio. How did that happen? It was through dedicated AWR radio ministry managers and layman helpers who, raise, who risked the dangers and built broadcast studios and towers. You can't save people. I can't save people. AWR can't save people. But the key is found in Zechariah 4, verse 6, where it says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Jesus saves. It's all about him. Jesus can save even the most impossible cases. Let's tell you the story about Al Alfred. <clears throat> Alfred is an old chief of cow stealers. He is a Dahalu. This means that he is also a witch. Being a witch is to protect the Dahalus against the power of the gun and anything made out of iron. As a result, no one can kill a Dahalu. So, how did Alfred, a formidable cow thief, discover the gospel truth? Alfred has an SDA neighbor. He's, his name is Michael. Michael is also a faithful AWR listener. Michael had a nice radio and would play it often. Alfred hated Michael's religion. One day, about three years ago, Alfred tried to kill all of Michael's family, but God protected them. Alfred asked himself, why am I not able to kill this family as I have done so many times before? picture of Michael. Michael was well aware that Alfred tried to kill his family, but he did not change his positive attitude toward Alfred. Instead, Michael continued loving and respecting him, since Alfred was the greatest and most respected man in his village. Michael's attitude toward Alfred's heart touched Alfred's heart. Isn't that beautiful? So, Alfred began to listen to AWR every day. And guess who he listened it with? He listened to it with Michael and his family. Then he began to follow Bible studies. But he did his best to avoid meeting the SDA pastor. However, 
Finally, in 2019, Alfred began to keep the Sabbath. Then the local Seventh-day Adventist radio station shared AWR Mega Voice podcast devices with the villagers, and Michael got one. And I just brought one and put it in my pocket. You see this little device? It's, it's rather small, about the size of a normal garage door opener. I'll tell you a little bit about these God Pods. These God Pods contain many hours of recordings, including the entire Bible. All of the Bible, sermons as well, Bible studies, health talks, and Christian songs. All on that little device. Over 2,000 hours of content. The pastor organized an AWR listeners group, and Alfred was among them. Soon, he began to ask himself, why am I so weak against the power of Michael's God? Soon it dawned on him that he had been living the wrong way during his entire life, and he was ashamed. The South, Southwest Malagasy Conference organized an evangelistic series in Alfred's village. Alfred was the first person to arrive on the opening night. He put away all practices of witchcraft. Isn't that beautiful? Without hesitation, he accepted to be baptized in the latter part of 2020 just months ago. Now he is the oldest and most faithful man in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in his village. His family has followed him in the new, and all are new Seventh-day Adventists, recently baptized. The gospel continues to spread in this red zone. Alfred's small group is now working to build a church. The Bible gives us this assurance in Romans 5, verse 8. But God proves his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus saves even hardened thieves. This past year, AWR decided to launch an online evangelistic series called Unlocking Bible Prophecy. Some of you may be aware of that. Due to COVID, many people were stuck at home and were unable. They were worried about the future, and some, many are still worried about the future. Millions have had the opportunity to hear the gospel this way, and many have watched such programs all the way through. Unlocking Bible Prophecies has been launched a second time two months ago. It is translated in Spanish, and shared via cell phone evangelism and social media channels in March of 2021. And I just wanted to present this to your church today. It's a 15 DVD uh, volume series. And uh, I'll give that to Mr. Kittleson to give to, Mr., uh, to your pastor and your church leadership. And I would encourage you to use these uh, at, at your... Um, uh, discretion, whatever you want to do with uh, evangelism or whatever you choose, it's yours. You're welcome. Also, another thing in March of 2021, we did the same thing. Unlocking Bible Prophecies International, that's a new, new version, has been launched in more than 22 languages. An additional 25 languages will be released later in the year. God's dreams aren't limited. He wants to save people all over the world. And I'll explain a little bit about that because we use native speakers in each part of the world to speak, uh, to do their, uh, to do the presentations. And it takes a little time to convert those over to the various language groups. And that's a lot of language groups. 25, that's almost 47 and 50. Every week we get updates. They're they're advancing. It's incredible. Thousands have contacted and continue, continue to contract our Center for Digital Evangelism in the Philippines with Bible questions and prayer requests. These missionary young people have discovered the deep joy that comes from working with Jesus. These people have discovered oh, they, how Jesus transforms their lives. He saves peoples for eternity. 
they make friends. These, these young people especially are working the, uh, this uh, digital evangelism. They make friends with these, contact, these contacts. They pray with them. They give them Bible studies. It's all online. Later, these interests are, they are connected to a local Seventh-day Adventist church from wherever they live. These calls can come in from virtually anywhere in the world. And these young people answer those calls. These precious young people are, uh, they're conducting Zoom Bible studies with many of the interests. New studies are continuing all the time. We have seen over and over again that Jesus saves. It's beautiful. Dedicated young people again, young and older people from various countries volunteering their time to answer instant chat questions as they come in during the online evangelistic meetings. Several suicides and were averted in, in connections to local churches were made. Quite a number of these people with whom volunteers had the initial contact are now baptized Seventh-day Adventists because Jesus is in the saving business. Amen. Another region. In South America, an entire evangelical church came to know the everlasting gospel with after watching Cammie's meetings projected on the side of a truck in an empty parking lot. It's kind of cool. Right next to their church. Others outside of their church were also baptized as it was such a public place that people were, uh, walking by would stop and watch the evangelistic series. And there they are. In the Philippines, there have been almost 2,000 baptisms, some of which have been connected through the Center for Digital Evangelism. They leave, or excuse me, they have watched Unlocking Bible Prophecies projected um, online as heard and also hearing it on the radio. So this series is both available online and, and on the radio as well. In areas where there isn't a place to do baptisms, we have received pictures of their makeshift baptist pool. I love this one. A truck bed lined with plastic and filled with clean water. <laughs> I notice the water's nice and clean. That's good. Here's an interesting one. This is a follow-on message. 150 rebel soldiers in the Philippines have been baptized, and it gives us nearly 500 people, counting their family members. 100 more, these are rebels, 100 more are preparing for baptism, along with their families and supporters. We are praying that this is, I'm going to go slow so you get it. We are praying that this year there will be a total collapse of the terrorist rebel regime, especially on the island of Mindoro. That's incredible. And I just got an update yesterday that the Philippine government is very, very happy with this. They're tired of killing their own people. They're tired of being killed. So the arrangement is that these rebels will, first of all, be baptized. Secondly, the Philippine government will give them one acre of land to farm. Now remember, when you were a rebel, you just, you're out of a job when you, when you become a Christian. So they don't have money. They don't have any income. So the Philippine government is giving them one acre of land to farm in farmable land. AWR is giving them five hundred dollars to start their, start their, uh, give them a start. <laughs> and there's also um, mental health counseling and de-radicalizing the their ideology as well, because remember they have family and friends. Can you imagine that? And this is all happening. I just got that update yesterday. I was I was just amazed. It's in the May newsletter. If you get the May newsletter, you'll see it. It's incredible. God is doing miraculous things. These are people that you would not imagine. These are communist rebels. That's all they ever knew. The war is 51 years old. If you're 51 years old, you don't remember anything except the rebel 
cause. For me, that's, that's exciting. Amen. Our podcasts are available on iTunes, Amazon, and Spotify. Evangelistic messages, messages of health, and practical Christianity have been downloaded. Podcast statistics, and I like to go slow on this, on these platforms, over 5.8 million listens or downloads occurred in 2020. That's a lot of listening, isn't it? Some listeners come back often to hear new programs, while others are brand new to God's truth from these uh, for their lives. Another big number. Over 5 billion people have smartphones in, their, in this world. We must reach them where they are. And they are on their phones and on social media. People today, how many can relate to this picture? People today are connected, but more alone than ever before. They are present but absent at the same time. How many of you have seen examples of this? I think we, most of us have. In Venezuela and Colombia, these are difficult places to, uh, to work right now. In Venezuela and Colombia, many have come to know the everlasting gospel truth for these days. They came into the gospel truth through cell phone evangelism, and evangelism via media using AWR sermons and Bible studies. Over 6,700 people have been baptized during the last 12 months. That was, you know, in February to February. Encouraging reports come, continue to come in. For instance, the last Sabbath of February in 2021, 54 people were baptized Thousands of others have been baptized or will be baptized soon around the world in various language groups. Jesus saves. He saves thieves, rebellious children, people seeking for answers in their lives, and rebel soldiers. He works deep in the jungles of the Philippines and Colombia, as well as with your neighbor next door. He seeks people who have never heard about Jesus in countries where it's, more le where it's not legal to share the Christian faith. AWR is there. And I continue with my story. Here I am in Zambia, Africa in 2018. You may, you may wonder, well, what made the difference? Well, I had to think hard about that. I believe that God led us into a new experience. I'm speaking for my wife, Sharon, and I. We were invited. First of all, we were asked to go. We were asked to serve. Asked to go on a mission trip and present the gospel message to the dear people in Zambia, Africa. Here I am with my interpreter, Edgar Zusa, sharing the gospel message. It was a Revelation of Hope series. What had changed in my life? No one had told me that I had slipped into a prodigal Laodicean condition, but I sensed it as I read the description in Revelation that we read before. Poor, naked, naked blind, and it was not a, not a pretty picture. My rock bottom occurred after a contentious, nasty divorce covering several years. I had not given up on God. I just needed to come closer to Him and to dedicate my life completely to Him. That's the difference. This is a very important time to remember. My godly parents, my family, and friends who supported me all along the time, this time of trial. Members, and this is an appeal to you, members, please remember to pray continually for anyone that you know who is experiencing 
spiritual, emotional, or financial distress. Lift them up to God in prayer. Don't stop. Don't stop. Even though you may not even notice much change, let them know that you are praying for them. Let, let them know that you are supporting them. Give them your support. Well, in due time, God turned my trial period into a blessing as Sharon and I dedicated our lives to him fully and solemnized our relationship 28 years ago. Several years after our marriage, we were asked to go on a foreign missions trip with the North Pacific Union Conference to the Philippines for two weeks. Several years later, we were asked to go again, this time to Fiji, on another mission trip with the NPUC, as Sharon was still working for them. We realized just how spoiled we were in our Western affluence. That made us ashamed. We really, it was, it was an eye-opener. We vowed to change our lives. And yes, a few years later in retirement, we are once again on an AWR mission trip in Africa 2018. I put a picture up here so you can see where, Af where Zambia is. It's right in the middle It's um, of the picture. It's the pink one, and it's in the southern hemisphere, as you might know. This is our destination just upstream from Victoria Falls, yeah, in the town of Livingston, named after David Livingston, the famous evangelist and, and um, missionary and, and uh, explorer in this region. Some of you can relate to that. We're loading up the airplane, the Dreamliner 787 in Los Angeles. Finding our, finding our way to a seat. This is just an example of what you can see on the back of your seat. This is our trip from Dublin. We made a fuel stop in Dublin, Ireland, um, on our way to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And here we are in Ethiopia, flying their flag carrier, Ethiopian Airlines. This is our lodge on the bank of the Zambezi River. In June, it's winter down there, so mornings are rather brisk, about 40 degrees most days for us. And they're sharing with her, with her coat on. The mist from Victoria Falls is about four and a half kilometers, about four kilometers away, about two and a half miles to the south of us. You can see the mist coming up. Now this is a picture of a picture, because we couldn't get down. There was so much water coming over the falls at that time. You couldn't see the falls, you just could sense it there, and you were just standing in this cloud getting wet, very wet. So I took a picture of the picture, and you can see all that cataract, and um, um, I'll just describe it since I can't point at it. But on the lower left side of the picture, you're in Zimbabwe, and as you go, um, you see all that water pouring down into that cataract. It all comes back underneath a bridge in the very... Uh, center right of the picture, there's a, there's a bridge, and as soon as you cross the bridge, then you're in Zambia, and all that water goes out through that bottom right corner. It's incredible. And of course, then as you um, exit Zimbabwe and you enter Zambia right there at the falls. This is setting up, setting up our church parking lot area. You see that big... Uh, a screen, that's a 12 foot by 12 foot screen. And uh, the seats and everything, and it's open air. And we do it at night. We can't show it during the day because we're using a projector. And that's what it looks like. And I wanted to call your attention. It's, it, can you see that little tree in the back to kind of the left, of the, you know, the left side of the picture in the back? It's a faithful young, well, an older fellow, a faithful gentleman who led the Bible study class, the baptismal study class, and he was wheelchair bound. He was just an amazing man. I just, and I felt so badly when he asked me, he wanted me to, 
come to America and send him an electric uh, uh, power, power chair. And I felt terrible about it because we're in sand. That sand is, you know, various thicknesses. And it, it, would, it just wouldn't work unless he had Tundra tires. And I, I, I felt really bad about that. So that's, that's the baptismal class you can read about. Sharon is standing there presenting her health messages. This was very important. The people of Zambia loved to hear the health messages. So she preceded the evangelistic message with health messages, with, again, with our interpreter, Edgar. And I want to take a little history for Edgar. Edward, Edgar was orphaned, but he's now a lay evangelist. He just graduated from college. He'll have his graduation, I think, in August of this year, and I had the privilege of contributing to his education because I was so, I believe so much in his, his, his resolve. This is the church, and you can see they take security uh, seriously with those, those, those security doors. And I just wanted you to see some of the beauty that the people enjoy there. That's the speaking platform, and uh, you see those roses there, aren't those beautiful? People just have just the most, uh, just artistic uh, beauty. And they really dressed that up for the last Sabbath. And I was so appreciative of that. And it was just wonderful. The gentleman in the middle right there with a uh, bright orange shirt, he's our taxi driver. And uh, the, uh, the congregation is listening to the, uh, the last Sabbath. Um, they put up a tent because it was really quite hot during the day. And his name was Chief Chief Bringo, our taxi driver. Just a very dedicated young man. Always on time, too. Well, this is our, minute, this is our baptism on the last day. And um, this is a pool. It is, uh, it's, our man, it's our ministerial team. It's our baptismal pool. Our last Sabbath there. Twenty dear souls were baptized for our efforts. And it's just such a... I can't, I can't describe it, but it's a, it's a beautiful experience. Dwayne McKee, he's in, he's in the pool. Some of you may recognize him, and Pastor De Los Santos is in there too. And then the gentleman that I'm taking a picture past his head, that's Vaselli, and he works, he works out of um, London. So it was quite an international gathering. You see, my friends, Jesus is just as real as you see him in this picture. He wants his precious children to know that he is there, ready to heal their broken hearts. Even prodigal sons like me, thieves, witches, and our neighbors next door. Jesus saves. I'm so glad. Your past doesn't matter. Their past doesn't matter. Jesus loves his children and his great heart of love breaks for the pain that his children experience. He wants nothing more than to save each one of us and them. Here's a quote from Spirit of Prophecy. It describes God's heart for sin-sick souls from steps to Christ. Let us read it together. Well, I'll read it. His heart of love is touched by our sorrows and even by our utterances of them. Take to him everything that perplexes the mind. Nothing is too great for him to bear, for he holds up worlds. He rules over all the affairs of the universe. Nothing that in any way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. There is no chapter in our experience too dark for him to read. There is no perplexity too difficult for him to unravel. No calamity can befall the least of his children. No anxiety harass the soul. No joy cheer. No sincere prayer escapes the lips of which our Heavenly Father is unobservant or in which he takes no immediate interest. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalms 147, verse 3. The relations between God and each soul are as distinct and full as though there were not another 
soul upon the earth to share his watch care. Not another soul for whom he gave his beloved son. Isn't that a beautiful promise? How incredible is our God. However, he needs you. You are his hands and his feet to bring the message to his wandering children. You see, no matter where you live, no matter where you, what your education might be, you have a calling to tell others about Jesus and share his love and touch and share his truth to the lost and dying world. Will you answer the call? Will you tell them the good news? Romans 10 verses 14 and 15 asks us a question. How, are, how can they, how can, how then can they call on the one in whom that they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Romans 10, verses 40. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Did, do you want to have beautiful feet today? Do you want to bring the good news of salvation to others? If so, I am extending this invitation, the call to each of you. There are many ways that you can witness for Jesus. And I have heard of some wonderful, incredible things right here in your church that you've been doing, and that is so heartwarming. Ways that your church can outreach out. However, yet, AWR offers some ideas. And the, father, uh, the, the, the following are just a few suggestions. I'll share them with you. Please pray for our missionaries and our volunteers, radio stations and the listeners. We need and we crave your prayers. Second item, share the AWR videos on your social media channels can be done. If you would like to help answer Bible questions and prayer requests and, mem and mentor others into a knowledge of God's truth, just go to the website and you'll see it right there. It's in the development stages now, so I ask for patience. But you can do this all from your home. Never leave home. Fourth item, if you would like to become an, a, a, a <clears throat> involved in cell phone evangelism, we will soon be launching a more efficient way of doing cell phone evangelism through a new app, and we're developing it. It's releasing soon. You can email us, and I have an email address there if you want to just jot that down. <clears throat> of course, you can always go to our website, awr.org, and you can give to a project of your choice. And that's a great place just to look and scan and look for videos and other things for encouragement. It's free. It's for you. Jesus wants us to do all we can to take his precious children home with him eternally. He wants us to just be partners with him in that. Will you enjoy? <clears throat> Will you join us in saying, Jesus? Use me today. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we've heard the invitation. You've seen many, we've seen many things that you are doing around the world. Some far too counts, um, countless to mention. However, our hearts are responding and may we serve you. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. And we always, <clears throat> we are so amazed at how you offer to save each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for that, for what you are and who you are. We offer this, praise, this prayer in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>